Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generation. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. For we have been consumed by your anger. And by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our iniquity before you. Our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your right. We are finished. Our years like a sigh. A day, the days of our years, sorry, of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet they boast as only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. You may be seated. Let me greet you all this morning in the all-powerful name of Jesus. A sad occasion for us to be here, but we are still here. And I just want to use this medium <clears throat> to say to the family my deepest condolences on behalf of the Church of God of Prophecy and the entire community. My deepest and our deepest sympathy to the family all I can tell you, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. Um, at this time, we'll be calling on Sister Cassandra Wilson to come forward and do our praise and worship. Sister Cassandra. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, man. We are in a funeral service, but... We are in church. We are alive. So praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise God. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul. Boy! 
to the moderator in Jesus name God bless you amen let us bow our heads hallelujah hallelujah what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and our griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, mighty God, the great creator of the heavens and the earth, we come to you today. You are such a friend. You are such a precious friend. You are so complete and you are so divine. And if we walk this entire world over, such a friend we can never find. Lord, we ask today that you will come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come in your strength. Come in your power. Come in your own special way in this service. God, we need you. There, oh God, we need you 
to touch the grieving hearts, to cheer up, oh God, those who are mourning, those who are cast down, those who are burdened down, the family members, Lord, today. The songwriter said, when death has come, and taken our loved ones. It leaves our home so lonely and drear. Oh, then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. But farther along, we'll understand why. Farther along, oh yes, Lord, yes, we'll know all about it. Cheer up, my brother. Cheer up, my sister. Live in the sunshine. You'll understand it all by and by. God is the one who gave life and he takes life. And he promised today, Lord, you promised that you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. When we are going through our grieving moments, Lord, you promised to be with us. I pray that you will come and be with us today as you take the service and the moderator, the message, the items and the program, everything that will be said and done. Let it be done according to your will, according to your purpose, Lord. And I pray that you will give strength and courage, physically, emotionally, mentally, strength and courage to the members of the bereaved family today. They need you. They need you. And God, we are praying that you will come in your own special way. Blessed today. And Lord, and as the service, oh God, will proceed. I pray, as David said in Psalm 39, verses 4, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. What is it that I may know how frail I am? Because every man at his best day is our only hope. And therefore, God, I pray you speak to the hearts of those who are not saved. The Lord, you will transform life through death. And your death make it possible for us to have life today. Have your way, Jesus, as we commit everything into your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Sister Cassandra, for doing our praise and worship in such an able way. Amen. I want to take a few moments to greet those just coming in, all our ministers from other churches, all other um, churches that are here, and everybody who come out this morning to share in this service. Those on the World Wide Web, I greet you in a special way this morning, and I trust that by the end of this service, a word will reach your heart that you too will come to know Jesus. We are going to be doing the opening song, and I'm inviting you to stand and let us just glorify God with the use of how great thou art. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thine hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the roar. sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when through Sweetly in the 
trees When I look down From lofty mountains grandeur And see the brook And feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul My Savior God to be How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul scarce can take it in that on the cross my burdens gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great Okay, you may be seated. I can, I start to imagine what David was feeling, Rev, when he was in a, in a hole. He was in a bad way. His soul was grieving. And he just had to shake himself up and say, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted? Within me, he said, hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him. He had to speak to his soul and say, hope in God's soul, for I will yet praise him. Praise God. I'll invite Alexia Blair right now to come forward with our first lesson, which comes to us from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Alexia Blair. Good afternoon. The reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Alexia, for reading well. At this time, we will have a song 
from the Turnberry Church of God of Prophecy, of which I'm the pastor there, and I'm calling on our own Sister Cassandra to come and minister this song. Sister Cassandra. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I don't remember which, which one of the artists said they got tired to see my face. I don't know if that's the case today. Blessed be the Lord. Praise God. Bob Marley. All right then. Praise God. So today, we join with the family who they are grieving sad times. But you know what? We are here today, and it's, there's a lesson somewhere in there for all of us. And it's reminding us, according to the Bible, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall put in his appearance, and therefore we must all be ready. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll get our business straight so we will all meet at the gate. Pray we'll all be ready for his return. Let me say that one more time. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll get our business straight. So we can all meet at the gate. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Two men walking by the road. One of them had a heart pure as gold. The sky was split and the pure in heart raptured away. But what of the other one left behind? He did not search his heart in time. He cried to the Lord, but for him it was too late. I pray, I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all. For his return, I pray that we'll get down on our knees so that the Lord can wash us clean. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Husband and wife laid in bed, one of them by the spirit led. The rapture came and took that one away. The other one rose up the next day to find their loved one raptured away. Oh, what a way to lose the one you that we won't be playing church. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Mother and children at the mall. Oh, mama heard 
the master's call. She was swept into the by and by. It's hard to rely on your mother's prayer when your mama is already gone. So learn how to pray, learn how to pray while you still have time. I pray we'll all be ready. I pray we'll all be ready. And if we play in church, we better stop. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll give our hearts a search so that we won't be playing church. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we'll get down on our knees so that the Lord will wash us clean. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. God bless you. Praise. That's a messaging song. What you call it? Huh? What you call it? A message in song. And I always say when I come to a funeral like this, and especially when you see that is a young person, man in his nice age, and he was just taken like that, it's not in vain. I'm telling you, he didn't go in vain because there's somebody here today that needs to know that you need to be ready. You need to sort yourself out, Rev. Every time there is a funeral, everybody are Christian. Watch when the music them start playing and everybody start trigger and jump and clap hand and everybody in the move. And when that finish, then gone back to the to, to the rumba, then gone back to the ganja, then gone back to the concubinage, then gone back to the adulterous living, then gone back to everything. But funeral gets you at a good place. It's not about a good feeling. It's about repentance. And I'm Send to the congregation and those in the hearing of my voice this afternoon. Work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. Dwight cannot work, and I know he did not know that his night would come in such a snatch in just a minute. So let me tell you, get yourself organized. Straighten out yourself. If it's church you're playing, stop it. I'll come good. Pastor, you hear what I said? Stop the playing at church. You go out and you dip your mouth and you're coming back Saturday and Sunday morning and, and, and sanctimonious. And if they call you for the praise and worship, you're up there. It's not the eloquence of speech. And it's not how able you are. But Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Get to know Jesus. Change your lifestyle too long. We in one way, man. I'm not the preacher, but me is a preacher too. And you give me my kin and me and I must drop a word. You think I go and see this big congregation and I say something? Eh? I miss this opportunity. Repent for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Second scripture, Revelation 21, 1 to 7. Andre, Abraham's son of the deceased. And I think another of his brother is with him and coming to support. Aye, hallelujah. Revelation. Revelation. Revel <laughs> Revelation 21, verse 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as the bride aboard, adored, adored from her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with, with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be uh, no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be in any pain, for the former things that are passed away. And he that sat upon, upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Seventh and last, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Well done, Andre. We are going to be having some reflections at this time, three of them. And Sister Kim is the first one. After Sister Kim is through, Avril, Abraham's sister, will come right after. And then Adrian, Kirk, and Curtis brothers will follow right after. Good afternoon, everyone. Where do I even begin? Words can't explain how I'm feeling since May 31st. I could hardly believe it when I heard the news that day. I tried to come and get it straight from you. They said you have left us. Someone swept your life away. From the look upon their face, I know it was true. Dwight, tell me all about it. Tell me about the plans you were making. I wish I could tell you one thing more before you go. Tell me, how am I supposed to live without you? How am I supposed to carry on when a huge Jesus part of what I was living Jesus. for is gone? I'm too tired of crying. Jesus. I did not come here to break, break down. It's just this dream of mine that has come to an end. How can I blame myself when I built my world around the hope that one day we would grow whole together as friends? But I know this is the price I'm going to pay for dreaming. I need you now, and it is more than I can take. How do I even begin to say goodbye? Dwight, Molly, Melbourne, D, my one and only, my forever. We did not see you close your eyes or hear your last faint sigh. We only got the sad news that you are gone. Too late to hug and kiss you and say how much we love you. No final goodbye. The last couple of months have been the worst for me. It's just God's hovering blanket that has been, that he has thrown over me that is keeping me. No one knew you like me. People have their opinion of you, but you were one of the sweetest soul. You were humble, quiet, respectful, hardworking, Honest, a husband, father, brother, and a son. You were a man of little words, but I understood you well. You didn't have to say anything. I knew exactly what you were saying. I could complete what you want to get across because I know and understand exactly what you want to say. I had total freedom with you. You allowed me to be myself. You put me in charge of most things because you trusted me totally. And no matter what, I had your back. I cover you in every way. You never disrespected me. Even when I got miserable and would say things as most of us wife would do, you would just walk away. You loved your children so much. Even though you seldomly express it verbally, your actions said it all. 
you were present at, at most, if not all, of, if not everything that related to them. Every night you would religiously check their room to make sure that they were okay. I would sometimes say, do I die in the house them there now? You know, so you don't have to lock up your window and the door them, so because they're in the house. As whole as Terry in his, that is first born, as him come in the night time, he would say, Terry gone to work already? Terry come from work yet, Kim? And I would turn to him and said, him, he would say, I'll oh, make him stay there. He must see your people wicked, I'm stay, make him stay that road. And I would have to say to him, do I turn on a baby now? In the formative years of the children's lives, you had them all the time. You taught them their ABC, you play with them, you took them with you wherever you were going, so I would be able to do whatever task I had to do. Maybe that's why they excel at everything they do. But as soon as they start to get started to mature, you would keep your distance. But they knew you loved them. I guess you could not deal with the changes in their body. Even though you did not publicly confess Christ, you had some principles that you lived by or I should say believe in. You believe that if you are a couple, married or not, you should not, one, have a separate account. But we know things go, so we always try to have a own bank account. Him said, enough to buy two beds, enough to buy no separate furniture. And he said, no matter what, you know, we know if you sleep in a different bed, you must sleep in the same bed and sort it out. He believed that if you did these things, you had plans for another life with somebody else. Yes, that's what he always said to me. If you're going to buy one next bed or something, and you have, I mean you have one next life, a plan. You strongly believe that no matter what, you should not divorce. You must work it out. He would say, any divorce I'm going to you, come in and do it. I know my life will never be the same again. You will always be a part of me because you don't just give up. You don't just say goodbye to 28 years. If I could live my life all over again, I would choose you. The only thing I would change is you being a committed man of God, a Christian. And once you are a man of God, I know that everything else would fall in place because once you're a child of God, that makes a difference in your life. I know God was working on you. There was this great change in you. In fact, I can say, you were religiously a member of Pastor Glenno Samuels and Gina Jennings Church. You kept on saying, Kim, you don't know what went to my heart. And I would look on him and say, you're right, I really don't know. And truly, God really have the final say. In fact, my husband was the one who 28 years ago encouraged me to give my life to God. He said, mommy, I'm a Christian. You have to come up from a church, after them them church. He would say, Kim, 1997, now I'm past, I'm gonna give my life to God fully. Me have to be like my parents, you know. I always jokingly said to my sister, Alice, that it must have been 2097, God, 1997, gone a long time. Even when his mother passed the other day, he said, me have to see her again, you know. He even stood up at the memorial service and said he wanted to accept Christ. But as I say, bad influence and bad association is a terrible thing, and it can lead us to a path that is not good. My little monologue to you. D. Diligent and dedicated. That was a diligent and dedicated person to whatever he did. His job, he, 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 he just get up and go work. Every, anything that he is he, doing, he dedicate himself to it. W. He's a very hard worker. From I know Dwight in my work until this day. In fact, he was on his way from work when they killed him. 
Hi, introvert. He is an introvert person. He don't say a lot. But he's not somebody that you can walk over. Even though he don't say a lot, but you cannot walk over him. G, he's a gentle giant. So he, he pretend he, he will be there. But if you do anything, it's not going to be just like that. So he was this gentle giant. He looked simple. But as I said before, he's not a walkover. H, humble. He was this humble soul. And I think sometimes because he was so humble, people even sometimes take him for granted. T, talented. My husband was a talented person. You know, I was amazed. My husband could pull a clock or a watch or anything, and he would just look at it. And he would just look at it, and he would just tell you exactly what is wrong. He was good like that. Even a vehicle, he, he, he was just talented. Dwight, I will forever love you. I don't think I will ever move on. I know I have to accept that you are gone, but there's a part of me that will forever cherish you. I can say like Paul in 2 Timothy, even though I know when Paul quote the scripture, he said, I have fought in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7. I have, fought, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought for my marriage. I fought to the very end. I decided that I would stay in my marriage and be committed to the very end. And I did that. It goes on to say in verse 8, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of life, a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, should give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing. I have fought this fight in my marriage, so I have kept, I can say I kept the court. I, I've fight this fight in my marriage and I hold on to the very end. And that is how I want to hold on to my faith. I want to go to the very end because I want to make it into the kingdom of God. In closing, I am here today to say to encourage somebody who have not yet given their life to God to say to you, I'm not the preacher, but I'm saying to you today, but you need to give your life to Jesus. No matter what you have. No matter how much education you think you have. No matter how much degree. If you don't give your life to Jesus, it doesn't make any sense. And today, if it had not been for Jesus, I don't know where I would be today. It is just God's grace. And today we are living in a world where people think that it's all that they can have. And they don't have any time for God. But even though I'm so broken, and I don't even know how things are going to be for me, but I'm saying to someone today, you don't know where next minute I'm going to be. But I said, give your life to Jesus. Because it is only Jesus that can make the difference in your life. Your money cannot help you. Nothing at all that you have in this world. My husband had a wonderful car. Well, we know they have bashy care, but it was a nice car. He lived in a wonderful house. But he is no more. So it was a, it's only what you do for Jesus that will count. And as I said, I'm not the preacher. But a lot of us today are just living our life as if nothing truly matters. But I'm saying to you, no matter who you are today, seek Jesus. Because if I didn't know him, I don't know what I would do today, but it is just Jesus. You might feel nice, and you feel you in your nice dress and your nice car, but nothing else truly matters. Nothing else. It doesn't matter where you can go in this world, nothing truly matters. Because when you come to the end, that is all we are going to get. A casket and just a place. And you're, if you don't know Jesus, 
I know people have different religious beliefs, but I'm saying to you today, I am grieving, but I thank God that I knew him. I thank God that he had saved me, because if he did not save me, I don't know what I would do. Maybe I would be on the road cursing and drinking when you think it is a easy thing at your home and you know that you live with somebody. He's not perfect. I did not have a perfect marriage. But you're at your home and you get the sad news that your husband's life is taken away. My husband isn't a bad person. My husband, as I said before, is one of the humblest souls you can come across. But today I'm here, and that can devastate you. Your life will never be the same. So I'm saying to you again, give your life to Jesus, because that is all that matters. Amen. Amen. And I have one little thing. My husband lived approximately, I look at it, you know, because I love maths. And I said, how oh, many seconds? And when I look at it, you know, I check it. And it said, he lived 1 billion, 608 million. 1 million, 680, million. sorry. Million. 1 million, 608,336 seconds. He lived 500 and 25,600 minutes. He lived 446,760 hours, 18,615 days, 2,652 weeks, 612 months, 51 years. And that is the end of my husband. I'm not like others. I don't know nobody else, so it is devastating. God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Dwight, my loving, humble, and kind brother, I can't believe you are gone. You are special to all of us. You are the type of person that I would give anything to, even without you asking. I love being your little sister. You are easy to love and quietly funny. Your charm was in that winning smile. Although rare, it was very special when experienced. Yes, when Dwight smiled or laughed, it was infectious. One of the things I'll miss about traveling the road with you is your good tasting music. We always enjoyed some beautiful melodies. As everyone who's close to Dwight knows, he loves his little culture mix and stuff like that. So I would learn, you know, those types of songs that you can vibe to. I miss our phone calls and your punchlines. I miss hearing your voice on the phone. Every time we conversed, we would end with, I love you, bro, or I love you, sis which wasn't always easy because Dwight's not the type of person who likes to show outward affection and say things like that. So this sometimes would be very awkward, but we both would get a kick out of it and say it in the end. I mean, we both get a kick out of it and saying like, you know, ending it with LOLs and stuff like that. My brother Kirk used to tease us and say, y'all just acting, the way y'all do this just makes everyone feel ticklish. <laughs> So none of us expected this to happen to you. But one thing is for certain, and it's that to live is to die. 
But Dwight, you will always be in our hearts. Your legacy will be kept alive with our memories of you because you lived a good life by enjoying it. Sleep tight, or angel, until we meet again. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Dwight, or do, as we would call him as children in the house, was always fun to be around. Dwight loved to play, and he and I would romp so much, our mother, our father, would be lamenting why us two would be always playing and running around the house like puppies. We were like twins because we were so close in age. People thought we were twins, and sometimes I wouldn't make them any wiser. Strangely, in the past few days, I noticed something that drew me back to the point I just made. Dwight's sons, Andre and Antoine, seem to have a relationship similarly to one that Dwight and I had. They're always together, playing or doing something inside or around the house, inseparably even. A painful reminder since the untimely death of Dwight is that he won't get to torture me on my birthday in September about, meet, about reaching the midlife crisis age, as I did to him last year. Airport arrivals and returns will not be the same because Dwight was always the one transporting the family. Dwight was more than just our airport chauffeur. He was irreplaceable. We will miss his great companionship, a sense of humor. He was a man of few words, but his one-liners are epic and memorable something that his close friends would know. His one-line witness was special and would have us laughing even if he remained serious. I was reminded about this by two of our cousins on Thursday that he bought curried goat and when he got the serving, there was hardly any meat. So he asked if they had blended the goat. <laughs> Another time he went and bought fritters or flitters as most people call it in the country. And um, when he got it, he asked if they grated the salt fish <laughs> because he couldn't find the bits and pieces. He would take the family to the beaches, eateries, and pretty much any leisurely activities upon request. There isn't much I can recall that Dwight was afraid of, but one thing for sure, he would never go near, near to a roach, especially those that fly. Otherwise, he would be faster than any athletic champion. If you have his phone number, take a look at what his WhatsApp status said. If you, do, if you don't have it, then I will just tell you what it said. It said, live life, in quotation. And this sentiment is very poignant because that is exactly what my brother was doing when he met his untimely death and the senseless demise by gun-wielding thugs who just wanted his car. A car they only managed to keep for five or, or six days, you know, less than a week. And as you heard before, Dwight was never confrontational. So the requests of the thugs were adhered to, yet they took extreme action. How wicked is the hearts of men when you can just callously kill someone for something they own without even thinking about the pain and grief you leave a family to bear? In my reflection of you, bro, you lived your life well. You worked hard. You're never into ballast keeping. You were loved. And we will cherish your legacy and memories forever. Thank you. Well, Sister Kim, you shocked me bad today. Eh? My word. Eh? Virginia, I was just up here trembling, believe you me. And, and, and stiff not because I said, Sister Kim, not going to do it. I'm so proud of you. Strong, strong girl, strong woman. You know? So, if you want to hoop after this, and scream and carry on, that's, what's that to me? Because you have stood your grounds today. Amen. Praise God for everyone. Avril, you did it.
And I'm so proud of everybody. Kirk, shock me too, you know. <laughs> God is good. Not true. He gives grace. Praise God. And I really feel good about that. All right. We're going into some tributes at this time. And the first one comes to us from the Turnberry Primary School, of which Sister Kim is a member of staff. Turnberry Primary School, please come forward. On behalf of the Turnberry Primary School family, we would like to extend condolences to the Abrahams family. We know that God will comfort you in your time of grief. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I know with soul you've got to be strong. And it's a fight just to keep it together. Together. I know you think that you are too far gone. But hope is never lost. Hope is never lost. Hold on. Don't let go. Hey. Hold on. Don't let go. Just take one step closer put one foot in front of the other you'll get through this just follow the light in the darkness you're gonna be okay you're gonna be okay I know your heart is hurting from those nights. Just remember that you were a fighter, fighter. You never know just what tomorrow holds. You are stronger than you know. Stronger than you know. Hold on. Don't let go. Hey, hold on. Don't let go. Just take one step closer. Put one foot in front of the other. You'll get through this. Just follow the light in the darkness. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. And when the night is closing in, don't give up and don't give in. Just be strong. It's not the end. It's not Remember the Lord said in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, I will be with you even unto the end of the ages. You're going to be okay. 
Thank you very much, Turnberry. Primary. All right, we are on to the open tributes. So at this time, I'll call on the Dintil Technical High School to come forward with their tribute. Good day, everybody. Okay, my name is Mark Auguste. Yes, Mark Auguste. It's a French name. <laughs> I am from Dental Technical High School. With me is Mrs. Malaika. Malaika. Right. Bailey, right. Miss Malaika Bailey. We are here on behalf of the Board of Governors of the Dental Technical High School to extend condolences to the Dwight Abrams family. His son is one of our best students, Adrian, at the Dayton Technical High School. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, I must say that he was one of the many students that helped me online to maneuver, to do the online classes when we were online in um, COVID-19. Yes, it was him. There are other members of the Dintil family here. Let me call their names. We're going to ask them to stand as, we call, as I call their name. Our principal, Mr. Garwood, upstairs. Yes, thank you. There he is. Uh, grade 11 coordinator, Mrs. Campbell. Also, grade 7 coordinator, Mrs. Ellis, who has been very active in Adrian's life. And form teacher, Miss Thompson. And there are, other, there are four other students that are here from his class. That's Jela, Jelani, Akira, Malik, uh, Malik, sorry, and Alana. All stand for me, please. And I myself is a guidance counselor there and also president-elect for St. Catherine Guidance Counseling Association for St. Catherine here. So we share your grief on behalf of the association and dental. Over to you, miss. Thank you, and my son is in your class. I'm a parent and a teacher also, and I understand. And today, I want the family to know on behalf of Dental Technical that we are standing in the gap for you. I heard that you were hurting and that you were suffering pain but I didn't dare to turn my head and look the other way cause when your heart is aching my heart is aching too let me help you bear your burdens that's the least that I can do I'll be standing in the gap for you and you and you just remember someone somewhere is praying for you I'm calling out your name praying for your strength I'll be standing in the gap for you listen right now you may be troubled but everything will work out fine because the spirit knows before you speak what is on your hearts and minds right now is interceding to see you standing strong again the peace that passes understanding will be us but until then I'll be standing come on and sing if you know it for you and you and you just remember I am praying for you calling out your name be praying for your strength I'll be standing in the gap 
for you you better believe right now you may be troubled but everything will work out fine because the spirit knows before you speak what is on your hearts and mind right now is interceding to see you standing strong again the peace that passes understanding will be yours but until then we'll be standing oh, 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 for you and you and you just remember someone some oh is praying for you calling out we are praying for your strength we'll be standing in the gap for you come on everybody we'll be standing ah for you and do and you just remember is praying all oh, calling out your name we'll be praying for your strength we'll be standing in the gap for you oh calling out your name sister Kim we'll be praying for your strength we'll be standing in the gap for you so we have um, a space here for two more open tributes I don't know who, if there is somebody who you were not able to get on the program and you have something to say about Dwight. You have three minutes each, two persons, three minutes each. Greetings to the family of the Most High God, King of all King, rule all things, flash lightning and roll thunder. I just want to say that I understand the occasion that everyone are here with a mixed feelings. I have a mixed feelings also. The same young man that lying in the casket is my classmate. We are come from small. We are know when he there and me. Yeah, man, I'm a classmate. We rap, we run up and down, we pick a range in a citrus. We go as Polka River, we catch swims, we do all sorts of things from we youthful days. And may I tell you, I'm a good friend. The other day when I hear the news, I was surprised. The news said the man work hard for him things. And some little guy went on like for sweat and work for them one. Come demand them and kill him and take away him things. But God is watching. I just want to sing a song to let everybody know that there is an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Hallelujah. Being in the storm, but it seems like forever. Nights of confusion seems to go Ship has lost anchor, and the storm got you drifting. Just hold on to Jesus, family member, hear this, and ride out your storm. Ride out your storm. Come on. 
Ananis come in. Just hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Ride out your storm. Family member, hear this. Remember God's promise that He will never leave you. Though the waters are raging, can do you no harm. Ride out your storm. God is there with you. You may not see him, but you. Hold on to Jesus, hold on to Jesus, and ride out your storm. God bless you in Jesus' name. This song is laid on my heart and I have to sing it. My heart can sing when I pause to remember it have heart taken is but a stepping stone I long a trace Hot tea! 
until then. Until then, my heart will go on singing. I know that one minister to Sister Kim in a special way. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Praise God. Roger Cunningham, friend, are you here? Huh? Come, Roger Cunningham. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. It's a sad day. If you see me cry, just cry with me. You know? I'm going to try and sing something. When I am down and all my soul so weary, when a troubles come and my When I am sitting and waiting in a silence until you come and sit a while with me, you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be there is no life no life without a struggle Restless heart beats imperfectly, but when you come and fill my life with laughter, sometimes it feels I glimpse eternity. Sing with me. You raise me. A DJ named DJ Nicholas. You know that um, singer, Chrissy? You know that, uh, uh, that singer? He have a song we say, Parson, give me the mic, make me go on on. So guess what? Before we go any further, I'm going to say to the person, take the mic and go on on. Where I want you. Good afternoon, everybody. There's a slight little change. We're going to take the summer just before the eulogy. At this time, my apologies for doing that. I am running a little bit behind schedule. 
to an appointment this afternoon. I just want to uh, encourage the family members and express my condolences on behalf of the Geisel uh, District of Churches. You have our prayers with you. Amen. Amen, everybody. Uh, I, I stood here, I sat there, and I listened to all the encouraging words coming from the individuals just now. And I'm coming to one conclusion that our whole duty is to fear God. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. It's to fear God. I listened to uh, Sister Abraham's gave, giving her uh, her charge to you. She says, seek God now. And I want you to understand, my friends, that the harshest reality of life is that it is appointed unto man what? Uh, you're not with me this afternoon. Wants to die, but after death comes the judgment. Understand that one day we may be in a casket. Come on, somebody. And so while life runs through your body, I encourage you to give your heart to Jesus before it's too late. Uh, I, I, it's good to see my good friend, Sister Bailey. She's from my home church district back in Clarendon. Uh, it's always good to be good everywhere you go. Amen. Uh, this afternoon, for the next five minutes or so, allow me to share with you from the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And the caption, a death is nothing but a sleep. Mm, you're not with me this afternoon. Death is nothing but a sleep. Paul in First Thessalonians chapter 4, he says these words, uh, but concern, uh, sorry, but I do not want you to be ignorant, virgin, in verse 13, concerning those who have fallen asleep. I want to note what Paul is saying here. Those who have fallen asleep. Understand that for those who live and serve Jesus, death is nothing but a cover on somebody. It's like you go to your bed last night, thinking, get up tomorrow morning. If you serve Jesus, death is nothing. Mm. Paul says, concerning those who have fallen asleep, Sister Abrams, do not worry yourself because death for them is nothing but a sleep. Verse 14 says, for if you I might not the, the subjunctive clause. If you believe in Jesus, understand, my friends. Paul never said you must believe in him. He says, if you believe, understand, my friends, that whether you believe in him or not, he's coming again. Uh, whether you like him or not, he's coming again. Whether you accept him or not, he's coming again. Paul says, if you believe in Jesus. Uh, therefore, I challenge you this afternoon. Understand that my God is coming again. I challenge you, believe in him before it's too late. Paul says, if you believe that Jesus Christ died, and rose again even so god will bring up those who are asleep i uh, know the words again my friend come on somebody uh, those who sleep in jesus understand that jesus says i am the resurrection and the life he believe in god believe also in me he says if you die you shall praise god you see my friends as people of the living God, we don't worry about death because I serve a risen Savior. Come on, somebody who's in the world today I know that He's living. Whatever men may say, I see His hands of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer, and just the time I need Him, praise God, He's always there. A song said, Better days are coming. Bye and bye. When I reach my city in the sky for the Christians, death is nothing but asleep. And so my friends, understand that only when you're wrapped up and tied up in Jesus, the grave is not your final place. Because Judge and say, I John saw on somebody and the holy city coming down from God and no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more death. You see, my friends, let me tell you something. I don't hear 
We can live our life just about any and anyhow. In the center of your life any and anyhow. But understand that if you don't live for Jesus, then you shall die for eternally. But praise God if you sleep in Jesus. Paul says, we shall rise again. Verse 15 says, for this we say to you by the word of our Lord, that we who are alive and, oh come on somebody, mm, sister, sister Wilson, you are alive and remain until the coming. Note what Paul is saying here. He said, when he comes, sister Bailey, until he comes. You see, my friends, there's some people who are telling you that for me, yeah, I don't mean he, me, I say, I come. And they are saying that he's not coming again. But let me tell you something, my friends. My Jesus is coming again. You know, my friends, as he was about to ascend back to heaven, he said to the disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, oh what? Oh what? Oh what? Many mansions. And he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And note what he says, subjunctive clause. If I go. Uh, follow me now, Sister Bailey. If I, did he go anybody? Did he go anybody? Did he go anybody? And the angel say, "Ye man of Galilee, why stand ye gazing for the same Jesus?" No, Jesus says, "If I go again, I what? I what? I will come again." Praise God! Jesus is coming again. Now, Paul says. We will not prevent those who are asleep. No, I want you to note, my friends, the word sleep. Paul don't call it death. Come on, somebody. Brother Martin, got your keyboard. You see, my friends, once you serve Jesus, Paul says, for the Lord himself, I'm about to sit down now. Paul said, for the Lord himself, not Pastor Gooden. For the Lord himself, not Pastor Gooden. For the Lord himself, not Sister Wilson. For the Lord himself, not your president. For the Lord himself, shall descend with a shout from heaven. And the trump, sound the trumpet, Elder. And the trump, sound the trumpet. And the trump of God, sound the trumpet. And the trump of God, sound the trumpet. Sound the trumpet, sound the trumpet, and the dead in Christ, 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 and the dead in Christ. never die in the Lord. So live for God, die for God, and you shall raise. You shall rise up when he comes. And let me tell you this last thing. If you miss heaven, you can't miss hell. You didn't hear that one? Me say, if you miss heaven, you can't miss hell. What a word. What a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. Make sure you die in Christ. So if you are not in Christ as yet, get to know him today. Hallelujah. So that when you die, you will rise up. You will rise in him. Amen. Praise God and the word of God. And those that are alive and remain. So anyway you take it, the people of God. Hallelujah. Get you. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. Oh, not stretch your hand to the man and say, God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Pastor. This one up the party street corner roll up in a hand, me go. You know?
and in the rum bar, and all when you are decent people are past them, are puff the ganja in your face. This are not one of them. And I want a young man, make we pray for them, man, that they will preach gospel. They will blow a gospel. Me like it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Taki. Taki, that's the school where Sister Abby um, worked. They are here and they would want to do something in brief. Come on, Taki. Taki High School. Oh, hallelujah. The thing warm. Ah, I like it. Praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. We are about 12 strong this afternoon. We are members of the Taki High School family. And I'm going to introduce my colleagues who are here. Some of you may not know, but Miss Abigail Abrahams is a teacher on staff. She belongs to the mathematics department. And she's also a grade nine form teacher. A young lady who is vibrant, multi-talented, disciplined, and committed to her job. As a school family, we are here. We empathize with you this afternoon. We give you, you and your family, our support. We know that weeping may endure for a time but joy comes in the morning. We pray that the Lord in his wisdom will wrap his arms around you and the members of your family and comfort you and pray and trust that on that day you will see Mr. Abrahams again. My name is Sonia atkins Meek. I'm one of the vice principals. With me, Jefferton Meek, Another vice principal, Mr. Scarlett, one of our guidance counselors, Mr. Allison, a teacher in the social studies department, Miss Neil, teacher in the English language department, Miss Williams, Miss Williams is one of those all rounders and she functions everywhere. We have Mr. Barrett from the math department. Behind me is Mr. Britton, our grade eight supervisor. We have Ms. Hunter from the business department, Mrs. Campbell, who is from the science department, head of the science department. We have Mrs. Samuels, one of our admin staff. We have Mrs. Gooden Johnson, our grade nine supervisor. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can get through. Right now it seems there's no way out and you're going under. God's proven time and time again, he'll take care of you, he'll do it again for you, he'll do it again, just take a look at where you are now, and where you are He always come through for you. He's 
the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but till you do it again, he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where and where you have been, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may the daughter of Dwight Abrahams to come forward. She's Abigail Abrahams to come forward with the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I must say thanks to the colleagues and staff at Dintil Technical High School and my very own staff, Taki High School, trust me, the support, it's really appreciated. Eulogy for Dwight Malvern Abrahams. Tears are words that need to be written. Paulo Coelho. It is also said that, and I quote, learning is not attained by choice. It must be sought for with ado and diligence. For the expectations of life depend upon diligence. The mechanic that would, be, would perfect his work must first sharpen his tools, end quote. In essence, this unknown quote perfectly captures Dwight's diligence. Dwight Malvern Abrahams, who was widely known as Fowl, was born in Middlesex, St. Anne, on Wednesday, July 28th, 1971 to father Earl and mother Merle who predeceased him two years ago. He started his school life at Miss Freddie's basic school. After, he attended Turnberry and St. George's All Age Schools, both now primary. Following his graduation from St. George's, Dwight attended Geisel Secondary, now high school in St. Catherine, where he honed his craft in mechanical engineering. He had a passion for pulling apart the entire engine of vehicles and restoring them from their, to their original form. Dwight also knew most, if not all, aspects of any vehicle, from patching a tire to totally dissecting them. His experience and technique garnered him high respect far and wide and is responsible for why he is so well known. Dwight always approached his job with panache, in other words, confidence, from he started working in Newton and then Guys Hill, St. Catherine. A co-worker in Linstead had such profound respect for him and his outstanding knowledge of vehicles that he introduced him to Mafisanti in St. Anne, where daddy worked for more than 20 years. Dwight met his sweetheart, Melanie, otherwise known as Kim, whilst working in Geisel in March 1994, and then got married a decade later in 2004. Their union is blessed with three children, 
Terrain, also known as Rajan, Abigail, and Andre. Dwight also has another son, Antoine. Daddy had a quiet demeanor, loved having fun, and had a huge appetite for food. He was a great cook, and many of you don't know this, but Daddy was a great cook. And Saturdays were his assigned days for cooking when he was growing up. On the few Sundays he was tasked to cook, he made the perfect rice and peas. His style of curried or brown stew chicken on Saturdays with green bananas and grown provisions was so unique. He hated cooking anything that would take up his time. You see, if it take more than one hour, nobody call him for cook it. Him not cook it. Him no want to spend too long in the kitchen. Oh boy. <laughs> oh God. It is a wonder with his short cook, with his shortcuts, his food came out excellent to his mother's chagrin. However, when Dwight got married, he, like most men, retired from the kitchen. His sister Avril once jokingly asked him if he missed cooking. His response was, Miss Wa, you must think man a girl, bo cook. <laughs> Dwight lived a normal childhood life. He loved playing the sport cricket and did chores. Daddy was always a quiet and humble soul, and that spilled over into adulthood. He was never the one to be in an argument, not even with his wife. If, he want, if, he, if she wanted to argue about something, he would simply not take her on. However, at the same token, he was not a submissive wimp. Dwight had a quiet strength that we all admired from his formative years. He loved his family and wanted the absolute best for them. He ensured that his children went to school and participated in everything to make their lives better. If he experienced any financial difficulty, without even asking, his family knew and would always step in. Dwight was so loved that any of his family members, both nuclear and extended, would give him anything to help him in life. The characteristics of this man, as I knew him all my life, was that he was humble. He was full of integrity, and throughout my years, I have never heard Daddy and anybody being in a confrontation. Dwight was always a hard worker because he learned his trade right out of secondary school. He began working immediately and never stopped trying to succeed. He was a mechanical engineer in the week, but on Saturdays, he and his wife Kim would be in Portmore supplying clients with food produce as a secondary income in their earlier years together. There's a side of Dwight, Dwight that most people did not know, the emotional side. Though very quiet, he was secretly emotional when it came on to certain things. He was remarkably close to his mother who predeceased him. During that grieving period, he was torn beyond words. And on the news of her death, we were told that he fainted. There was principle, and when it came on to his children, he would always ensure that their needs were met. Their success in life is a testament to him and his wife's ability to ensure that their hierarchy of needs were met. He had structure based on the firm principles of his loving parents. As a toddler, he and all his siblings got along. And that continued into adulthood, where he was always in contact with his brothers and his sister. He and Uncle Troy were very, very close. They almost went everywhere together. Dwight was one of the best drivers, and me no say, everybody knows that daddy can drive. 
And if you're ever going out of the car there, you're not fret for your step in that car until you come out. It was a smooth sailing journey. And you're not half a fret when I'm driving. Daddy was very passionate about carrying vehicles. He really ensured that any vehicle he drove was clean inside and out. And trust me, those vehicles he had would have something very unique about it. Even to the very last vehicle he owned, which cost him his life, was referred to as the bad wish. You dare not eat in his vehicle, leave garbage in it, not even mention slamming the door. Daddy would have hiss him teeth. I you know when him hiss him teeth, him kiss it from here, so go all the way down and make a sex. <laughs> on Tuesday, May 31st, Daddy took his final breath. We are now left with this stark reminder that this very hard, dedicated worker and the family man would have met his demise in such a tragic way, going home from work. Along with his, along with his wife, Melanie, also known as Kim, and the children, Terrain, Abigail, Andre, Antoine, Dwight leaves behind to mourn his untimely passing, his father, Earl, brothers, Paul, Kirk, and Troy, sister, Avril, and a host of relatives and friends who will cherish his precious memories forever. We will always remember you, Daddy. You are surely, surely missed. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine on you. Love you forever. This is a brave family, don't it? They are strong. And I have learned that even in this time. Abby, that was wonderful. I, I felt like I, I knew him all these years, you know? I am in Turnberry for seven years, and I have met this man, and never. You, just how they do, morning pastor, evening pastor. And if there's anything to come down to money, he would take it and all that and give it, but not a word. He was really a man of few words, you know? And um, all of us are shaken by what happened, but there's, God is still on his throne. Amen? God is still on, on his throne. And he will bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or evil. At this time, I'll be calling on Deaconess Reed to come forward and pray for the bereaved family. Deaconess Reed. Praise God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his name. Good evening, everyone. Praise God. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, how we praise you, how we honor you, how we adore you. Almighty God, we laud you this afternoon, Lord, for you are worthy. Almighty God, you are good. Heavenly Father, you are faithful. And you are not slack concerning your promises, God. Father God, we give you thanks. Mighty God, we just worship you for who you are. You are great. Almighty God, you are worthy, sweet Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. 
Almighty God, this afternoon, Lord. The family, oh God, as they mourn. Almighty God, you know the depth of everything, God. Father God, your word tells us that you can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We pray at this time, God, that you will comfort their hearts. We pray, Almighty God, you will give them strength. Heavenly Father, God in heaven, we pray, God, they will not mourn, Lord God, as one without hope. Father God in heaven, but that you will stand by them, Lord. God, you will keep them. Almighty God, you will preserve them. Oh God, they have lost a father, a husband, a son, a brother, a cousin. Almighty God, but Heavenly Father, through it all, Jesus, help them to learn to trust you. Father God, bless them. Stand by them one more time, God. Give them the strength they need. Almighty God to go on. Father God, for without you, they cannot make it, Lord. God, we put them into your hands this morning. Mighty God, we put them at the foot of the cross, God. Breathe upon them, Holy Spirit. Touch their lives, God. Those who are not saved, God Almighty, we pray. Oh God, at this service, Lord, Almighty God, a word will reach their hearts, Jesus, and they will look to you, Almighty God. Father God, remember Remember Sister Abrahams, Almighty God, give our strength. Right now, God, she have no strength of her own. But we ask you, God, to sustain our Almighty God. Bless her in a special way, Lord. Touch little Andre. Touch his brother, God. God Almighty, let your presence be with them, Almighty God. Father, we put them into your hands today. God, we just look to you by faith. God, you never fail. You never lost a battle. Almighty God, you are not slack concerning your promises, God. So we look to you by faith. Heavenly Father, that you will hear and you will answer our prayers. Take over now, we pray, God. We put Put everything into your hands. We wait upon you. We claim it and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, I will invite Carmel Tabernacle to come forward with their musical selection. This will be done by Jade Masters. Good afternoon, everybody. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, 
by yourself but don't cry I know better days are coming better days better days I know better days are coming better days better days better days they season for what you're going through but stay focused and never lose sight I know smiling or don't smile but everything everything will be all right better days oh better days they are they are coming they are coming better days better days better they are will get better 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 days better days better days they are coming mm, better days are coming oh, mm, They are coming, they are coming, they are coming soon. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You hear our voice? Wow. I don't know if it's the gospel, um, the gospel song contest that she's entering. Is that Sister Masters? But I know that she's on um youtube and all these places and you need to go over and look for jade masters and give it a like and subscribe and all these things you know think me all me know these things so subscribe and you know bigger up and and, and to get some votes no so all right all right oh this has been a good service this has been a good service in spite it is a funeral service, but this was a good service. We can't say less. It's true, don't it? Oh, praise God. The presence of God was here. And so we are down to the gravy where we will be heading out to the, the burial ground where the committal will take place. The family members are asking that we go through Benbow. It is very near. So let us head towards Benbow and go right around. Is that okay? Yeah, all right. So the recessional hymn, we will do that, but stand with me before we do the recessional hymn. Let me just pronounce a blessing. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. God bless you. Recessional him, oh, I want to see him. And at the third verse, the platform party will go, and then the family, and then everybody follow. As I journey through this land, as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, 
to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierced my soul from without within. But my Lord leads me on through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him to look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving way. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. There's a past, home and last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night. But I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan's fears may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leads me. Oh, I want to see him, to look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving ways. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our past, oh my last, ever to rejoice. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain height, and behold my Savior there leading in the fight. With a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low, guiding me, I can see as I onward go. upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice there's a past oh my last ever to rejoice thank you very much on behalf of the Abrahams family, I take this opportunity to thank the Seventh-day Adventist Church right here in Guyfield for hosting the funeral and for being a wonderful host. God bless you all. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your day's down here or through There's a place up there for people like you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you The streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place Up there for people
Almighty God, to take home his servant, Dwight, I now commit his body to the ground. Please to Lord. Ready, Floyd? Yeah, no, one. just one, Lord. Ready? Please. One. Board. Four. Six. Three. 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 Ready? Down. Come over to your feet. Come over to your feet. Take a time. Take a time. Come over to your feet. Take a time. Take a time. So I now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, until that great getting up morning. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you at this time. As we commit your servant back to the ground, I pray, Lord, that you will grant unto the family strength to carry on in this time. We give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. As the workmen get together to do their thing, let us all just give them space and let us go to our program. There's a land that is, there's a land beyond the river that we call the Sweet Forever. Come on, Frederick, let us sing. Yeah, let us sing. 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 Good man. 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 Good man.
man, man, good man. Speed. Man, man, speed. Man, speed. Man, speed. Brother, too much of money. can't buy no more. Easy, just it. Money, you just it now. You tell you, what is it All right, tell you. Good. Tell me, I tell me, tell me, tell tell me, 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 Love you, youth. I'm a brother for life. Love you. Yeah, Paul, I'm a, I'm a daddy. Love you to the max. I'm a teacher. I can't carry you inside Paul. I'm there. I broke down any way you want. You tell me everything we do. I love you. I'm a brother. Alright, some sweet day. Some sweet day I'm going away. Some sweet day I'm going away. I'm gonna leave this world. No more sweet love. Some sweet day. Meet me by 
not far away. For when my Lord shall call me home, I'll be happy, oh, beyond the sky. Keep me by the river. Oh, 
and communion of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all now until Jesus comes. Amen. Hallelujah. The Praise Lord. the name Thank of Jesus. Sleep on, beloved. Sleep and take your rest. Lay down your head upon your Savior's breast. We love you well. Yes, Jesus loves you. Oh, 
leaflets I wander And hear the bird sing sweetly in the trees When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur And hear the moon and feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me How great the heart, how great the heart Then sing my soul, my Savior God to me How great the heart, how great the heart Not spearing, sent him to die. I scared can take it in. Then on the cross, my burden gladly bearing. He bled and died to take my sins away. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great the Oh, great the heart Then sings my soul My Savior God to me How great the heart How great the heart Then sings my soul My Savior God to me How great the heart How great the heart Then sings my soul 